Hello students, I welcome you all once again. In this class, we will be learning about a new topic that is Sidgwick theory of coordination, which can also be called as electronic interpretation of complex or coordinate compounds. Okay, so you can write down the side heading as electronic interpretation of complex compounds or coordinate compounds, which can also be called as Sidgwick theory of coordination. This theory was proposed by Sidgwick and Lowry in order to modify Werner's theory of coordination compounds. Do you remember students in the previous classes we have learned Werner's theory of coordination compounds. Kindly watch that video so that you can learn what all points we have learned under Werner's theory. Okay, so Sidgwick and Lowry developed the electronic structure of elements in the year 1923 so as to modify Werner's theory of coordination compounds. Okay, so they that means in uh, Werner's theory we have learned metal atoms possess two types of valencies. Do you remember students what are those two types of valencies? Primary valencies and secondary valencies. Okay, so primary valencies are formed by the transfer of electrons and secondary valencies are formed by sharing of the electron pair. Okay, so this we have learned under Werner's theory of coordination compounds. Okay, okay students. Now, Sidgwick observed that all the molecules are ions which coordinate with the central metal ion have at least one unshared pair of electrons in their structure. What is that students? Sidgwick observed that all the molecules are ions which coordinate with the central metal ion. They possess at least one unshared pair of electrons and this unshared pair of electrons is donated to the central metal in the formation of a bond. Okay, so this is what Sidgwick observed. Okay, students. So what did he observe? All the molecules are ions which coordinate with the central metal possess at least one unshared pair of electrons. And this one unshared pair of electrons is donated to the central metal in the formation of a bond. Okay, clear? This point is clear, students. Okay. Now, the atom donating the electron pair, what is it called as? It is called as donor and the metal which is accepting it is called as acceptor. Okay, so which is donating the electron pair, that atom we call it as donor and the metal atom or the ion which is accepting the electron pair we call it as acceptor. Okay, underline the words donor and acceptor. Okay, now hence Sidgwick replaced the secondary valences proposed by Werner with a new name called as coordinate bonds which can also be called as semipolar bonds. Okay, students. So now the secondary valencies which were proposed by Werner, they are now replaced by Sidgwick and he is now calling the secondary valencies as coordinate bonds or semipolar bonds. And these bonds are represented using arrows and the head represents the acceptor and the tail represents the donor atom. Okay, so what did he observe? He observed that the atom donating uh, the electron pair, he named it as donor and he called the metal atom or ion which is accepting the electron pair as acceptor. Okay, now the Werner secondary valencies are called as semipolar bonds or coordinate bonds by Sidgwick and he represented these bonds by an arrow, the head showing the acceptor and the tail showing the donor atom. Okay, and the coordinate bond is not different from covalent bond. The coordinate bond and the covalent bond, they are not different, but only they differ in the mode of formation. Okay, students. So, you can uh, observe in the given uh, figure the structure of CO NH36 plus 3, uh, the, comp the structure of this complex according to Sidgwick. What is the central metal atom here? The central metal atom is cobalt and the ligands or the donor at, donors are 
NH3 molecules. Okay, so cobalt is now accepting 12 electrons from 6 ammonia molecules. Each ammonia molecule donates a pair of electrons. So, 2 electrons from each ammonia molecule. How many total ammonia molecules are there students? 6 are there now. So, 6 into 2 that is 12 electrons from 6 ammonia molecules. Okay, so the coordinate bond is represented by an arrow. So, you can see here the head is representing the acceptor and the tail representing the donor atom. What are the donor atoms here? NH3 molecules. Okay, nitrogen is the donor atom. What is the acceptor atom here? Cobalt that is the central metal atom. Okay, clear students? So, uh, this is uh, just an example of COnH3 6 plus 3 according to Sidgwick. Clear all these points? So, Sedgwick theory and EAN rule. What is EAN? It is nothing but effective atomic number. So, we have learned from the previous points that the metal atoms accept electrons from the donor atoms. Okay. Now, Sedgwick also suggested that the central metal atom accepts electrons from the donor atoms. So, until the total number of electrons in the metal ion and those donated by the ligands is equal to that of next higher inert gas. This total number of electrons is called as effective atomic number. Okay. What is it students? The central metal atom accepts electrons from the donor atom. Still the total number of electrons in the metal ion and those donated by the ligands is equal to that of next higher inert gas. That number is called as effective atomic number. Okay. I have given an example here. Uh, CO NH3 6 plus 3. This is called as hexaamine cobalt 3. Hexaamine. Why? Because there are 6 NH3 groups and cobalt is the central metal. 3 is its oxidation state. Okay. What is the atomic number of cobalt? It is 27. Now, cobalt uh, in this complex, uh, uh, we can see that it is present in plus 3 oxidation state. Okay. If you try to calculate the oxidation number of cobalt in this complex, you will get it as plus 3. Now, total number of electrons in CO plus 3. How many students? 27 minus 3. We will get it as 24. Okay. And uh, uh, the ligands present in this complex are 6 ammonia molecules. And each NH3 molecule donates how many electrons? 2 electrons to the central metal that is cobalt ion. Okay. Understood atomic number of cobalt 27. And uh, in this particular complex, cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state. And the total number of electrons in CO plus 3 will be 24. And each NH3 molecule donates 2 electrons to the central metal ion. Okay, clear? Now, how many uh, ammonia molecules are there? 6 ammonia molecules. So, number of electrons donated by 6 ammonia molecules will be 6 into 2, two that will be 12. Okay. Therefore, now how to calculate effective atomic number? EAN of CO plus 3 in the given complex will be equal to 24 plus 12 that is equal to 36. And this 36 is the atomic number of Krypton. Okay. Since the number 36 corresponds to atomic number of Krypton, the above complex is stable according to Sedgwick. Okay. So, the point to be noted here students, the complexes whose effective atomic number is same as the atomic number of the next higher inert gas are stable. Underline this point, the complexes whose EAN is same as the atomic number of next higher inert gas are stable. And there are also few examples in which EAN rule is not obeyed. Okay, so those examples in which effective atomic number rule is not obeyed and the examples in which effective atomic number rule is obeyed, we will be learning in the next class. Okay, so kindly don't miss the next class students. Watch this uh, uh, video completely and then wait for the next class. Okay, so understood students. So in this class, we have learned about uh, the Sidgwick theory and also EAN rule. EAN means effective atomic number. 
okay clear students so watch the complete video write down all the points and learn carefully okay thank you